presented. Welcome to Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN, presented by Tecate. Now, every boxer dreams of headlining a fight card in Las Vegas. And tonight, at the Chelsea, in the Cosmopolitan, unbeaten prospects Antonio Orozco and Keandre Gibson get that chance. Orozco is the top-rated junior welterweight, looking to prove that he's ready for a world title shot. And Keandre Gibson looking to spoil his party and have a party of his own. In our co-main event, Mercito, no mercy, Kesta takes on Gilberto Flaco Gonzalez. Kesta is coming off of a 17th month layoff due to shoulder surgery, but says he feels stronger than ever, and he's got a lot to prove. And Gilberto Gonzalez is a knockout artist from Mexico City who is as tough as nails, willing to fight through anything to get not only the win, but the knockout. Good evening to you all. I'm Bernardo Osuna, joined by future Hall of Famer and Golden Boy Boxing partner and my broadcast partner for the evening, Bernard Hopkins. And we got a great main event tonight with a crossroads fight for two unbeaten fighters who are willing to give it their all. But Orozco already had a misstep in his career after losing the opportunity for a world title shot, basically on the scale. How does he recover from that? I mean, this is an opportunity to come. He recover from that because he moved forward and now he got a chance to really erase that a win t tonight will be so so important to move forward because you if you look at it that division is hot and whoever established coming up in that division right there at the cusp of being the person that everybody's watching and looking for that's huge so i'm looking for really a shootout here i'm looking for two guys to come that want this fight as a victory for them to move forward in bigger better things now this is a redemption fight for antonio orozco and this is a fight for recognition for keandre gibson now he's been in the gym sparring against the likes of manny pacquiao saul canelo alvarez ruslan provodnikov and Pauli malinaji elite fighters on the world scale but now he's got to step into this ring and make his own history under these bright lights. What do you expect from him? I expect him to come in there with experience. I mean, you just mentioned three names that was world champions of the world. He, that experience helped. It's not a negative, it's a positive. And I'm looking for him to use all the lessons and all the teachings that he got in the gym. I mean, that's important. I'm looking for a lot, a lot of boxing, a lot of intelligent moves. And also what's important is, to see who won it the most, who trained, who really talked to talk and walked to walk. And this is where you separate yourself from the contenders as far as the pretenders. And this is the night that will highlight what's next in boxing future. Sparring partners have been able to step out of the shadow of legends. He'll try to do the same. Mercito Gesta coming off a of shoulder surgery says he's stronger than ever. And Gilberto Flaco Gonzalez has eight knockout wins in a row. Looks for number nine here on Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN. Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN is presented by Tecate, born bold. And it's brought to you by Hennessy. Never stop, never settle. All right, the man you're looking at right now is ready to step into the ring. They call him Mercedes. His name is Mercito Gesta. He hails from the Philippines, and he wants to step out of the shadow of Manny Pacquiao. He had a torn labrum for years, but he thought it was just the pain of being a boxer. But he's coming back stronger than ever. What got me into boxing is, is actually my dad. He was actually a former amateur fighter when he was a kid. And then growing up, my, his parents doesn't want him to, to go pro. So uh, his dream is when he got his kid, he will turn his kid into a professional fighter. For me, I think that my strength as a, as a fighter is to be able to adopt the, uh, what's in a situation in the ring. Every fight's different. You, you always have a different opponent. So I think for me, that's the key to win the, to the fight, uh, is to, to learn how to adapt, uh, how to control your opponent and make sure you study your opponent. And in the end, of course, once you get that, it, it's gonna be a little easier. 
uh, you know, I, I really try to push myself in the sparring because I know I've been off for a while, but I remember I got injured too with my rib back then. I've been off a year, but I did good when I when my comeback. I knocked my opponent on the eighth round, and, you know, I wouldn't really worry about that because I, I believe on my on my condition right now in my training, so I'm always excited, you know, like, like I've said, this is what I do, and I like fighting, I love to be in the ring, and I want to show all the, the training I've done in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, live from the Chelsea here at the Cosmopolitan Las Vegas, Nevada. A very good evening and welcome to Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN, presented by Tecate, born bold. And sponsored by Hennessy, never stop, never settle. We are set to go with this bout, 10 rounds scheduled in the lightweight division. Your three judges scoring at ringside, Eric Cheek, Robert Hoyle, and Dave Moretti. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Hall of Famer, Robert Byrne. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing tonight, red trimmed in white and gold. He weighed in officially 134 and one quarter pounds. In 30 professional bouts, his record, 27 victories. Just three defeats. 22 wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando de Distrito Federal, Mexico. Here is Gilberto Flaco Gonzalez. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Where's tonight? Orange, trimmed in red, blue, and gold. He weighed it officially 133 and one half pounds and has a record standing at 29 victories. One defeat, two draws, and 16 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is the fighting pride of San Diego, California. Mercito, no mercy, esta. Okay, gentlemen, you had your instructions in the dressing room. The only thing I'm going to remind you of now is when I say stop, hable pare, okay? But that means to stop whatever you're doing, give me a clean break. Okay. You understand? Okay. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Gentlemen, let's do this. All right, Mercito Gesta, trained by Marvin Simodio, did a lot of work with Freddie Roach at the wild card gym. He's trying to shake off some ring rust after, after 17 months away from the ring. And let's take a look at our Tecate Tale of the Tape as we hear the first bell before we can get to that. But I'll tell you what, the inactivity of both fighters is something that we're going to have to really keep an eye on. Some ring rust from both guys. It's been exactly a year to the day that El Flaco Gilberto Gonzalez has been in the ring, but it was not due to injury, so it's Hesta who really has a lot to prove. Hesta do have a lot to prove, and you know, coming off an injury, you know, it, it's kind of tough, but if he, you know, really stick to what the game plan is and go into the first two or three rounds getting his rhythm, he can, you know, loosen up those little kinks and also being rusty. It takes time to unrival that rusty, so he won't have to go ahead and now throw punches, get some rounds in, and then feel comfortable as he gets into the fight. It's been over 500 days since Mercito Gesta stepped to the, into the ring. He told us in our fighter meetings, I feel better than ever. My right hand is stronger than ever. And we mentioned earlier the fact that he really hadn't been throwing that right as much as he'd like to. And early, you know, he's usually economic with his punches, and now he's throwing that right more than he's ever done it before. Well, Esther is coming, you know, he's coming out being aggressive, but you know, he's a softball in the right hand and left foot with the orthodox fighter, as he's been, you know, showing and displaying the last 15 seconds, it's going to be key in this fight. You know, the softball and orthodox, they look at each other different. It's not looking in the mirror when you fight a softball versus a softball, or orthodox fighter fighting an orthodox fighter. So you see the, the stance of both guys, and the right hand from the softball and the left straight down the pipe is going to be really important for Esther. So Hesta showing confidence in himself, throwing good combinations against a power puncher in Gilberto Gonzalez, who's willing really to walk through fire in order to land shots of his own. He wants to really turn southpaw now and switch things up on Mercito Hesta. He learned to do this 
while he was helping sparring with Marco Antonio Barrera and Juan Manuel Marquez as they were preparing for Manny Pacquiao. Well, he's not confusing Esther by turning Southpaw. He's confusing really probably to himself because he's trying to find a way where he can see a better target. And that's the way he thinks that it might be a better target being Southpaw. But let me tell you, Gonzalez is really focused on nice that straight oh, left nice hand. Nice uppercut, too. Yes, nice uppercut, but he's focused on that straight left hand after a right jab. And that seems to be the punch he's going to be focused on as the fight goes on. Looking for those one two combinations. It's become a chess match in the center of the ring momentarily as Gonzalez lunges, looking to land. And Hesta just staying within himself, throwing those quick combinations as uh, he is wont to do. Gonzalez should be using his jab from out range first. Mm. Round one coming to an end here from the Cosmo with Bernard Hopkins on Bernard Osuna as Hesta punctuates round one. That's all. As promised, here is our Tecate tale of the tape. You'll notice that there's been 546 days since Mesito Hesta last fought. That's 84 rounds more for the Filipino fighter, but the reach that's where the big advantage is for Mexico City's Gilberto Gonzalez with that four-inch reach advantage. But Gonzalez is not using that reach. I mentioned it before the round ends. If he take a half a step back and use that reach, the distance right there is where he should be, not that distance that he's getting hit now by combinations of punches. Now, he's ne what you're saying is, is he's negating his own power by taking that extra step in and not allowing Hesta to be caught on the edge of the glove. He's not, he's smothering his punches and he's not letting his punches get the full extent of the power and even the quickness. And he can also get countered because he's long, but he's staying so close where he can't get out of the way even if he tried. Hesta looking to time Gilberto Gonzalez. Nice uppercut there by Mercito Hesta. It's very confident in what he's doing inside the ring tonight. Gonzalez should be staying right where he at now, pumping that right jab and trying to sneak the left hand down, the pipe or in the shoulder or down the middle. But he's not doing that. He seems to want to be in close to fight a small man's fight where he should use his, his, use his height for advantage. Looking to use the jab is Gilberto Gonzalez, who once again turns southpaw. Doesn't seem to be working so well for him, so he might want to turn orthodox. A little bit of inflammation under the right eye, or left eye of uh, Gilberto Gonzalez. Well, I believe he thinks that if he turns southpaw, he won't get hit with the straight left or the right hand that's catching him, as we just seen right now, off a stiff jack. He don't seem to be comfortable in any style because he switched already for two styles, from orthodox to southpaw, and then he's back to southpaw. Mesito catches him on the end of the glove coming in. He's looking a lot more comfortable so far is the Filipino fighter. Who really, when you have an injury, B-Hop, and you feel like you're at 100%, it looks like it's showing on the way he's fighting tonight. Well, I don't think it's showing. I just think he's getting a little bit comfortable, as I said early on, that you get a few rounds under your belt coming off an injury. You know now that you settled in, you feel good, if you feel good, and you get to doing things like this. Great Combinations, counter. combinations, right hands, left hooks, four, five, six combinations. Ooh, but then he gets caught with a right hand from Gilberto Gonzalez. That's exactly what Gilberto Gonzalez wants. We've said before, he's willing to take a lot of shots in order to land his own. Now he's just getting wild, and Gesta is somewhat playing with them, moving laterally. Yeah, but now we got blood on the nose of the Mexican fighter. Oh, well, absolutely. See, that's the, you know, he figured that he had, you know, everything going on for himself. He took his eye off the target, and he got counted. Tough as nails is the best way to describe Gilberto Gonzalez. We'll explain why later on in this fight as he touches gloves as round two comes got to a bell, guys. Time! We live in them. When you throw combinations and you stand up straight, trust me, the other guy's going to try to throw something, and he do, a left hook. So when you throw punches like that, you got to keep your head down and you got to look for something to come back. If you don't, you'll get countered, and sometimes those punches knock you either out or down. Anything can happen in the ring, especially when you're in against a puncher like Gilberto Gonzalez, who's got 81% of his victories by way of knockout. He's been stopped as well, so a lot of his fights and before the final bell, we've got blood now on the face of Gilberto Gonzalez spewing out of his nose. So 
That's going to be a concern, but he's fought through so much more than that. When you see blood like that coming from Gonzalez's nose, it, it, it has to be broken because that's a, that's a really, really lot of blood coming down from Gonzalez's nose. But Gonzalez is throwing punches hard because he don't want to take a chance on this fight going another round or two because it's really bothering him and he's touching it with the left hand because he's been hit with a good straight left on the straight right on that same nose. And he's blowing out of the nose, and that's probably the worst thing you can do if it is broken, B-Hop. Well, we told, yes, but you never blow your nose if it's bleeding or been punched because now your eyes swell up. Yep. And when your eyes swell up, now you can't see. So you got bigger problems. He's already got the issue of the mouse underneath the left eye that's going to start to inflame his face is red. And there's the uppercut you mentioned. And down goes Mercito Festa. He was down in his last fight. That was a flash knockdown. No flash here, B-Hop. But it was a knockdown. That was a knockdown. Just like we mentioned earlier. He threw punches. He got comfortable. He got countered. And he went down. Legitimate. Let's see how Gesta reacts here. There's a minute and 25 seconds left. We knew that Gonzalez had the power to shake up Gesta. He drops him here in round number three. A bloody mess, but he's always willing to do what it takes in order to get into the fight. Look for the knockout. Big left hook there by Mercito Gesta, and he gets countered by Gonzalez. This is an all-out war. All-out war like we predicted. And let me tell you, Esther is throwing some punches hard. But Gonzalez is throwing punches to the body. If you see him ripping the right hand to the body, and every now and then he comes up with the right, with the left. You know, he, he's establishing that he is strong, oh. that he's coming, and he want more. That's it. That big right that was partially blocked by the glove of Mercito Gesta, who now lands a nice right, seems to have gathered himself here in round number three. As Gonzalez pushes forward, Gesta tries to use his legs. That's to been not, not try to trade being flat-footed because he seems to be at advantage when he's moving like this. When he moves like this, then Gonzalez got to go ahead and reset. As long as he continue to reset, he can buy time. That is, Esther can buy time to use that jab and then use that straight left. Looking for the one-two combination. A big round here for Gilberto Gonzalez, who dropped Mercito Gesta as we listen in on the corners. Hennessy's corner cam. Let's go. Hennessy never stop, never settle. Focus, focus. Okay? Inawa. Asan yung bucket natin? Ay, kung yan sana yung puso, ay paabot sa yan tira. First fight working with Marvin Simodio and Freddie Roach, who is not here. Okay. Okay. All right, B-Hop, walk me through this uh, uppercut that drops Gesta. Well, it's combinations. And as the balance wasn't right, he got hit with a punch that really wasn't a big punch. And it was a really didn't even hit his body, hit his arms. But you when you're off balance and your feet are straight, he, that front. happens. That happens. He wasn't on balance and he got hit, but it's a knockdown. That's it. Sometimes they tell you, punch for the arms, punch for the chest. If it lands right and the guy's off balance like we saw Hesta, that's exactly what happened. Now, live, it looked like he got hit by a vicious uppercut. Yeah, and he did. It was contact to the body, which caused it to be a legitimate knockdown. Round number four of a 10-round fight. We know what we're getting. Mercito Gesta trying to outbox Gilberto Gonzalez and El Flaco from Mexico City looking to knock Mercito Gesta's head off with uppercuts or wild hooks. So far, he's been able to land one that shook up Gesta. Let's see if he can continue the pressure here at the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. Esther need to continue to do what he's doing. Boxing, not running, but boxing. But he has to keep his hands moving at all times because Gonzalez is looking to get that one hard shot in, whether it's the body, whether it's the right hand or left foot or the stiff jab. And now this there is he happening. Is. He must continue not just move, but he has to throw punches while he's moving left or right. There we see now Mercito Gesta able to get Gonzalez off balance and connect a nice combination. But both fighters are really going wide with their punches. Here Gesta putting punches together as Gonzalez is up against the ropes. Doesn't seem like that's the place he wants to be. Well, Gonzalez can fight anywhere and feel comfortable because he's a straightforward guy. He don't fight big. He don't fight, you know, with a long arm reach because for some reason he feel comfortable fighting a small man's fight. Nevertheless, he needs to throw jabs from the distance and let that straight right hand, straight left hand come straight down the pipe as he throw it from a southpaw position. He's been working with 
Joel Diaz out in Indio, California. That gets good work in there in terms of sparring, but he really needs to show a lot more here tonight because four rounds in, except for being able to drop Mercito Hesta in round three, it's been Hesta dictating the pace. I would like to see Hesta throw that jab, that right jab, and plant his feet for a left uppercut, and then a right hook. That will be the punch. will at least have Gonzalez taking a half a step back. Oh, well, big left there from Gonzalez, but Hesta's able to make it slip off of him. Yeah, he sort of rubbernecked it. You know, he sort of yeah. went with the punch, but he didn't counter. You know, you make a guy miss, you make him counter. I would like to see Esther come back with a straight left after he made him. The move was brilliant, Watch your but hands, he didn't guys. come right back. Now he did with a three-punch combination. And look at the legs of Gilberto Gonzalez. He felt that punch. Well, Gonzalez right now is really in front of Esther getting pop shot because he got blood coming from his nose. He's breathing. He's he, he's really probably taking blood in. He's taking blood in. He's breathing blood. He's swallowing blood. And now he's throwing punches from, from a desperate situation. And he should be right now because he's hurt. Mercito Pesta looking to seal the deal here in round four where he's boxed well. Just can't make any mistakes against Gilberto Gonzalez as we've seen earlier on in this fight. Six, five, four, three, two. Bow, bow! Bernardo Suna and Bernard Hopkins coming to you from the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. And so far, so good for Mercito Gesta, a fight that on the scorecards may be a lot closer than what we've seen due to that knockdown in round three as we begin round five with hot action in the center of the ring. Yeah, very hot action. You know, when you see Esther, you see him throwing a lot of punches, but you don't see uppercuts. You don't see things that, you know, I would expect to see when he has his guy, Gonzalez, in a position like that. He's bleeding. He's having trouble, um, you know, catching his air. He's, you know, really spitting out blood. I think if you throw a little bit more uppercuts in there while you throw those combinations, he can be more effective, and he might get some, some reaction. Now, B-Hop, when you see a cut over the eye, you know that it's affecting a fighter's visibility. When the nose is bleeding and it's busted up like Gilberto Gonzalez is, what are the effects of that? You, you go to the kill. I mean, if, if you, Esther, you go for the kill. But if you, Gonzalez, look, Gonzalez is a tough guy. Gonzalez has been through a lot. You know, it, it's a distraction because he's keep wiping and he's keep blowing it. He's know it's, he knows it's there. Right. But this guy is tough. He's been there, done that. He won't quit. His heart will continue to come forward. But this is something that he's dealt with in his career so far as adversity. And we see the big looping right from Gonzalez that lands on the chin of Gesta, who this time is able to take it pretty well. And the volume of punches is definitely in Hesta's favor early on here as we are near the midpoint of this fight. Esther still has to be, he, he has to be careful on that rope and not pity patting and leaving his head up. We see him get knocked down by what? Looking at his work, throwing combinations and, sta and standing tall. If he continues to do that in these late rounds with both guys use energy, it might be, it might be really surprising that he go down again now, to the, him. The one thing that's been really missing from Hesta and he's using here in round five was that jab because through four rounds, they had both connected 29 jabs each. And you would not think that because Gonzalez is a strictly power puncher. Very, very much a power puncher, but he's thrown a lot of punches that are power punches. And that shows condition. Bernardo, that shows, Bernardo, that shows con condition by both guys to be able to take those punches and still react to them, and Gonzalez still continue to come forward and take punches in spite of his condition. And Mercito, Mercito Hesta looking to tee off with the uppercuts there. He's targeting that nose. He knows where the weak point is, and he's finding a way to punish Gonzalez. But though, that's what he's doing is punishing him because there's really no power on those punches, but they're accumulation of punches. And accumulation of punches turn into what? Speed, they turn into damaging your, your you know, Gonzalez face even more, but he must continue now to throw body shots to try to slow him down. Getting to the midway point of this fight now, Joel Diaz, who is Gonzalez's trainer, says that he's one of the toughest fighters he's ever had. Now we're going to hear Gonzalez explain how he tore an ACL and still got a knockout. I turned my body to give a hook, but my boots were new, and the mat was new. My feet locked while my knees kept turning. 
My body spun, but my knees didn't. And I tore my ACL. Robert Diaz looked at me and told me to get up. So I did, and I adjusted my knee, but that's why I kept hopping across the ring from the pain. If I planted my foot hard, I knew my knee would buckle again, so I kept fighting with a torn ACL. Now that was two fights ago against Hevinson Herrera in July of 2015. So he's been through a lot more B-Hop, and that's what Joel Diaz was saying. This guy can go through anything to get a victory. Not just a victory, a knockout. When you fight through our, the torn ACL, this bloody nose, Bernardo, is no big deal. Yeah, tell me about it. I mean, this guy, we saw him hop across the ring to get a knockout because he was desperate. Not desperation time yet, but Joel Diaz is quite concerned in terms of what the refs and what the judges will see because they also judge blood. We saw it in the Chocolatito Gonzalez fight in his loss against Thor Rungbisai. The judges look at blood and they take that into account. Yeah, and you might not, you might say that he's not in a desperate move or his corner is not, but they are. I mean, he came out aggressive. He came out throwing some hard punches and caught Esther with some good right hands. But let me tell you, and just now the right uppercut that caught Esther standing straight up again oh. like he did. Good this is the chance that Gonzalez, yep, good body shot, but no, Whoa, this is the chance stop. that Gonzalez stop. has the opportunity to knock him down. Watch your hand. Right. This is the type of fight that Gonzalez wants. Hesta's falling go. into Gonzalez's wheelhouse, so he's got to be really careful. If you're exchanging uppercuts against Gonzalez, we've already seen what he's capable of as he goes to the body there, to the solar plexus, and Hesta is forced to go backwards. You cannot fall asleep on Gonzalez because of that. Yep. That wide left hand, punches like head. that, catch you sleeping, you will be asleep. Now, the one question is when you got a, a guy who's throwing so wide, why is it that Hesta's not throwing shorter, quicker punches to counteract that like that? Because he's now, he's trying to, I guess, avoid the wide punches and understanding that, you know, if he, if he should understand that he should just smother the punch, come back and fire, or let it go over the top and come and hit him to the body. But he's so leery of it that he's trying to get away from it by any means. And that's why he's putting himself in more and more range to get hit by running from it than ducking underneath or trying to smother it with either side of the body. This is exactly what Gonzalez wants. He wants you to be on your toes, moving backwards, so he can create that. He Actually, Hesta's creating this space for him to land. Well, Esther just looked at the clock when he looked over, <laughs> and he's trying to look out how many seconds left because now he's going to win. His mouth is open. Look, he's been on his bike every now and then, not all the time, but he's throwing combinations still. It's that long layoff. It's not the same to spar in the gym, no matter how good your sparring is, as it is to be in the ring with the lights on, no headgear, and a guy who's got no other gear than to come get you. And this is a fight where both guys want to break out their careers even more by letting everybody see him on ESPN. This is an opportunity now to take that step forward and not three steps back. Gonzalez will always have an opportunity to continue to be a guy who becomes a gatekeeper, who is tougher. That's what he wants to avoid. Mercito Gesta, on the other hand, he wants to become a headliner, and he's got to come away with a convincing victory here tonight against Gonzalez as round six comes to an end. Out west. Tonight's Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN's main event is headlined by this man, Antonio Orozco, the number one ranked super lightweight by the World Boxing Council. He's 25 and 0, and his nickname is Relentless. Much like we're seeing in tonight's co-main event, Gilberto Gonzalez, a fighter who keeps coming forward. That's what we expect against Keandre Gibson. Now, in the corner, Joel Diaz was saying, look, son, you're nobody's punching bag. You've got more guts than him, and you hit harder than him. Go get him. And he gave him the right instructions because he wanted him now to go get him. He knows he's coming forward, but he feels that Gonzalez is stronger. And if you look at the fights in exchange, Gonzalez appeared to be stronger, but he has to now let the punches go in volumes. Let's to keep the pressure on Esther, keep him on the ropes, keep it back against the rope, because he will not win this battle in the middle of the ring. And as we've mentioned before, sometimes Mercito Gesta has been told or it's been said that he does just enough to win tonight his punch output through five rounds 
is way above his average. He's connecting 22 out of 77 punches that he throws per round, and Gonzalez connecting 17 out of 47. So a lot more in terms of what Hesta is doing when it comes to punch volume. Well, has to know that people are watching, and right now he's under a radar because of the injury, because of the layoff, and now he wants to make a statement by not only throwing more punches, but being accurate and being a, a good boxer, a good smart counter puncher. And this is what he has to display for people to realize that he's back to stay and for business. Hesta is throwing about 100 more punches in this fight so far, but it's the precision of his opponent, Gonzalez, that really is surprising when you look at the percentages, but the damage is very different. What both fighters are doing, and you see once again how Gonzalez is blowing that blood through his nose, and you can only imagine or, or expect him to be swallowing some of that, and that's got to bother him as he connects a nice uppercut to Gesta, who drops his hands momentarily. But Gonzalez, you have to give. Look at the straight left hand, and it got little Esther's attention. Oh, of Gonzalez is oh, coming that with the right too. hook. He's coming, now the left is coming. He's putting pressure, he wants this fight, and he's not backing up. This fight here is an exciting fight, and they both are showing they will. They both are showing that they want this. And we've talked about toughness. No doubt that Gonzalez is not gonna be stopped by a bloody nose, and Mercito Gesta, although we can see it coming, Bihop, he's not reacting as you would expect because he's getting caught with those shots that we're seeing from down here. Well, they've been toe-to-toe, -to -toe, basically. One going backwards, but both of them have been so free close up, free to the phone booth. Phone booth they both is continue to throw combinations. So it's a little weird in terms Stop. of, of Stop. endurance. But let me tell you, these rounds here is going to be rounds that's going to be shown to people that show that these guys are mean in business and they want to move forward. Mercito Hessa now on his bike because he knows that if he stands still, Gilberto Flaco Gonzalez is gonna come and try to connect with those vicious shots here as round seven comes to an end. A fight that has a 10-8 round because of a knockdown getting closer as the rounds progress. Hey! So you're not gonna... Flaco, tienes que encimarte le más, güey. Cuando te estás encimando, al salir es cuando lo vas a agarrar, güey. Julio Díaz says okay? you've got to be al on top of him. Where you're going to land okay? is when no he salga, steps wey. to the Eso. side. That's when you got to punish him. Those are the words from Joel Díaz, who's agua, got agua, agua. Diego Magdaleno and Dominic Serna as his assistants. He's drinking a lot of water. That's the third time he asked for water. Why is that being Vamos, a hacer cabrón. Bueno, vamos, because, wey, you know, you get hit with those uppercuts like that. So the pinche aire, vamos. You got to now hey. look at hey. how you hey. make hey. things hey. different. Hey. All right, Bihop, the uppercut is working quite well for the Mexican fighter. Yeah, because he's in that position. Both guys are in position to throw their punch, and whoever gets there first, Gonzalez or Esther, then they will make that connection. But they both in position for both of their favorite seems to be in this fight, punches, whether it's the right uppercut or the straight right hand. Esther right now has a good, good combination flow going on, but he don't want to get in a war with Gonzalez face-to-face, -face, toe to toe because I believe Gonzalez got the more accurate uppercut, the more accurate right hand in close. Now, I find it very interesting to say, I want you to be on top of him to smother him because the plan is not to hurt him when you're smothering him. The plan is to hurt him when he's stepping out like he does there. And uh, Gilberto Gonzalez, as long as he's able to do that and connect with that left, is going to keep Mercedo Hesta moving laterally. Gonzalez is through two straight one-twos, and they hit right on the mark. Esther's seen the... It seemed to be a little tired. It seemed to be like their headlights, standing straight up, breathing, looking at the clock. Again, the same oh, punch. Oh, uppercut now by Mercito. That's the right check hook. And it was a punch to get me off, get, you know, get him off him. Gonzalez was through two punches, combination, back to back. That's and you know guys, what? He did the right free. thing, but he didn't he throw punches free. in Let's combinations. Go. And that's what he needed to do. And then move out of the way. Don't stand in front of Gonzalez after he finished punching. Esta now lands a nice left cross, but then he just has to step to the side. He knows what's coming. He knows that the barrage of punches is coming. One punch at a time, he misses the second one. And I gotta give credit to the corner of Gilberto Gonzalez. He's had that mouth since round two under the left eye. With the fact that he's bleeding from the nose and keeps blowing it, it's impressive that it hasn't been a lot more swollen. But Gonzalez cannot continue to take punches square on the button. He just threw a good one too but he's taking more punches than Esther is getting hit himself. Guys exchanging jabs here 
as round eight has about 50 seconds left to go. And this is where it gets tough because it's been a close round. There's, they've had moments uh, of, of good boxing from Hesta and power shots yeah. from Gonzalez, but it Watch looks like head. Hesta Watch wants to take over here in round eight. Well, Hesta just threw the first body shot and, you know, a minute went by and both got his head hunting. And then Mr. Gonzalez is going straight for the knockout. Whether he can hit it with the right or the left, Gonzalez, no urgency is near. He needs to go ahead and get the respect even more of Esther. Nice three-punch combination by Mercito Gesta as Gonzalez looks to be tiring, but he carries his power late into fights as he tries to go to the body here. Gesta always has an answer, and he's catching a second wind here at the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. Nice finish from Gonzalez. Straight left hand, and Esther is really paying attention, and he tried to fire it right there off the break. And look, let me let me say one thing. That right hand behind that was the punch. When you miss the left, the right hand is there to clean it up. Round nine, the closing two rounds of this fight. Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN with Bernard Hopkins. I'm Bernardo Osuna from the Chelsea at the Cosmopolitan. Mercito No Mercy Gesta with the orange trunks and blue trim out of the Philippines taking on Mexico City's Gilberto Gonzalez in the red trunks with the white and gold trim. And that's the way the fight has been going. Mercito Gesta trying to use the jab, trying to outbox a very game and aggressive Gonzalez. Gesta is using veteran type skills. Right now what he's doing is boxing. He's, he's letting his punches flow. He's not using a lot of energy. He's sort of using speed, snap, sharpness, and continue to move and give a moving target instead of a steel target. And that is really, really educational and also shows where he at with his head. He's in the fight. He knows he's pop shotting Gonzalez, and he's setting him up right now for something big. I feel it coming. You can see he's using his legs. He's getting in position to counter. The corner of Gonzalez wants him to continue pursuing Mercito Gesta, but you mentioned it. Gesta using his legs, countering with that right, dropping his hands, which can be dangerous against a power puncher like Gonzalez. Gonzalez is dangerous always because he's flat footed. So he's all coming with he's coming with power. But he cannot deal with Esther's movement and pop shot and, and combinations when Esther sits down and throw combinations. This is confusion to Gonzalez. He haven't thrown a punch but one right now in the last 10 seconds. So this is this is something he's not used to. He's not comfortable when he got a moving target. He's like a sniper. He wants you to stay still. Let him up, let him up, let him up. Esther doing the right thing there, moving, keeping Gonzalez off balance. Reminds me of a fight that you had against Tito Trinidad where you just would not allow him to set his feet If you said if he sets his feet he's successful and you don't move your feet You're gonna have big problems if it's not early it'll be later and now Esther is using his legs more than he uses hands to get in position and then when he get in position He fires off two or three shots in a few seconds. You will see that Mesito Gesta once again peek at the clock on the big screen here at no, no, the no, Cosmo. So, ooh, as referee Robert Bird is trying to step in, a big left hook from Gilberto Gonzalez. And now Pesta comes in as they exchange punches. Almost letting a good round go. So, Mercito Gesta is pop shots and boxing his way to a good ninth round as Gonzalez wants to close out and steal it here on Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN. Stop, 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 stop. That's all. Him up. This is the 10th and final round of our co-main event featuring Mercito No Mercy Gesta taking on Gilberto Flaco Gonzalez, the Mexico-Filipino rivalry at full swing as 
Kesta gets tagged with the right hand, somewhat of a push, but this is what you expected when it came to the finish of this fight. Both guys laying it on the line, B-Hop. All out war, absolutely. They are no, they fight it. Listen, Gonzalez fighting like the fight is so close where if he win this round, he win the fight. Who knows? I mean, we, we've seen things happen in boxing, but this is what both guys feel because Gonzalez is coming forward like he needs the knockout to win. And Mesito Gesta knows that, so he's trying to box a little bit and keep the fight where he wants to fight. The real estate, as Teddy Atlas always says, is important here in round 10, but Gilberto Gonzalez has one thing on his mind. He's done it before on a torn ACL. He's trying to do it now with a busted up nose. Finish the fight strong and finish the fight by not leaving it into the judges' hands. That left hand was straight, <laughs> and let me tell you, <laughs> Esther got a good chin. I mean, he rolled with some of that, but Gonzalez is throwing that left hand, and he means business. If it connects, we're going to see something strange happen to Esther's legs. <laughs> you hear the crowd yelling, Mercito. Mercito, his dad, is a Muay Thai fighter who in his 50s was still taking fights in the Philippines. Mancito's got some toughness in him, too. Gonzalez got to let both hands go right now, and he cannot sit there and wait for a setup. He cannot wait and anticipate that, you know, Esther will slow down and stop and fight him. He must fire right now. Throw combinations, both hands. He's not doing that, and he's confused, and right now he's getting a little frustrated. Mercito Hesta playing his part uh, in the cat and mouse game, not allowing Gonzalez to set his feet. You can see also Gonzalez is tired. He's breathing through his mouth. The nose is bleeding. It's all bothering it. But nonetheless, what courage Gonzalez has shown tonight. He has a lot of courage, and he will not stop until that bell ring. And let me tell you something. He's going to continue to fight that straight left hand because he know it has, he had success with it early, and he's going to try into the bell ring. Last 20 seconds of round 10 here at the Cosmo in Las Vegas. This is our co-main event, setting up for a great main event. The action between Mercito Gesta and Gilberto Gonzalez has been non-stop. Yes, clench your fist, go, let it fly. As only five seconds remain, we make it to the final bell. Hey, here that's on Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN and B-Hop, both fighters gave it their all. And it would seem that Mercito Gesta just did enough to come away with the victory. What a war. What a war. Both guys have heart. Both guys try to put their best at the last second of the fight. And you know what? When you see that, you know that they know how high stakes this was. Mercito Gesta coming back off of a 17-month layup. Gilberto Gonzalez off exactly one year since his last fight. And Biob, let's take a look at what this fight was all about because there was punches flying from round one. You know, when you see Gonzalez throwing one punch, but he's throwing at the right time, you get that reaction. And that reaction was not good for Esther. Esther got hit with shots because of standing tall, because looking at his work and he got countered. Then the fight started to change a little bit, and in the final round, we saw them go toe-to-toe -to -toe after Hesta had learned to outbox him over the last three rounds. Guts, guts, guts by both guys to continue to still put pain on each other after all these punches have been thrown off the fight. Mercito Hesta there having Marvin Simodio remove his gloves as Marvin Simonio worked with him for the first time at the wild card gym where you know the sparring is good. You know that these guys have a lot of heart and that Freddie Roach and Marvin Simonio are going to get the best out of Mercito Gesta. Also, he wants to come out of the shadow of Manny Pacquiao. We have the official decision in the center of the ring with our very own Joe Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 exciting rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards one more time. Put your hands together, Las Vegas, for both of these boxing warriors. And here are the judges' totals. Dave Moretti has it 99-91. Eric Cheek, 98-92. And Robert Hoyle, 96-93. All for your winner by unanimous decision. No mercy!
Mercito Hesta. Now, 96-93 seemed like the most adequate, but someone didn't even give him a 10-8 round. Behind. Yeah, and that's that to me was it was an accurate uh, vote. But you know, the decision was good. Yes. I mean, that's at the at the end of the day, the decision was good. It was a brilliant performance, nutrition, skills. Worked his way back to do what he got to do. Great fight for him, great experience, and I'd like to see what happens next in his career. The right man won. The math might not add up, but Mercito Gesta has his hand raised with all justice here tonight on Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN. Tonight's main event, it's going to be a good one. Antonio, relentless or